way back when, 25 plus years ago, um, I was just kind of starting out in my career, getting somewhere. I was offered the job of a lifetime. Um, and it was to do a bikini calendar shoot for a prince, namely Maza Mahmood. Obviously, I didn't know that's who he was at the time. Um, I was promised amazing things, things that I could only ever have dream dreamt about, you know, um, huge sums of money, f being flown around in helicopters, red carpet events, being dressed in Chanel, just all the things that would make a young girl's, you know, eyes shine. Um, I was flown over to Lanzarote to meet uh, Mazen Mahmood. We'll call him the fake sheikh because that's who he was at the time to me. Um, after telling me about all these amazing things that were going to be happening, um, he then went on to talk about a launch party that he would want me to attend to launch this um, magazine, the bikini magazine. It was the first of its kind um, in one of the United Emirates countries. I think it would have, was Dubai. Um, once he started to talk about this party, he was very clear about the fact that he enjoyed um, girls who would party. He made it known that he wasn't, he didn't really think people who didn't do drugs or people who weren't sexually aware, they would be kind of boring and he wouldn't want those sorts of people at the party. Um, it was probably 10 minutes after that, that a bodyguard who was employed by him then brought out cocaine and I was greatly encouraged um, to do some. That's where my mistake was, I think. Um, I felt pressurized to do that and it was certainly something that I wouldn't have chosen to do had that pressure not been there. I didn't do it in front of anybody because I thought I wasn't comfortable. I think that proves that I wasn't comfortable doing drugs because I, I, I you know, I, I was panicked over that. Um, short time after that, he continued telling me about how amazing everything was going to be and on all these promises he was making to me. He then took me aside privately and asked me um, to, would I be able to, he made it, didn't make it sound like I was drug dealing, I didn't feel like I was breaking a law, he made it sound as though I was doing him a favour. When somebody's just offered you the world and then asks you to do them a little favour, you feel beholden to do that and the favour that he asked me to do was to get him um, a small bag of cocaine. I remember saying to him, thinking because the, the, the drug dealer who was employed by him must have been sat 10 feet away um, and I did point it out to him and I said, well, Billy has it just, and he said, I don't trust him. I trust you, so now he's putting me in a position of trust as well. And don't forget, he's royalty at this point. I didn't not believe he wasn't a prince. He made sure that um, the royal thing was very much a part of it and the way I was being treated. <clears throat> Before going to Lanzarote, we were meeting in the Savoy Hotel and it was all very, very believable. So I did what he asked and I got some cocaine from Billy. Um, the prince had asked me to take it to his room later on. That's where I thought the problem was. I thought he was going to be propositioning me sexually and I was petrified of that. And I then said to Billy, um, the drug dealer, I said, I'm not going to take it to his room. I said, I'm too scared as he's going to proposition me. I'm going to say no and I'm going to lose everything. Billy was obviously in on it. Um, he's admitted to being in on it on Panorama. That was aired some years ago. Um, Billy was clearly not wanting me not to deliver. So Billy's idea was for me to just to slip it under his hotel room door and come away and send him a message to say it was there which is what I did. I, at the time, thought I had done what was asked of me. I hadn't disappointed him, but I hadn't put myself at any risk, but little did I know I had. I did try to um, fight against it when the story broke because it was very, very untrue. Um, but I just didn't have the means to do so. And I think that that was one of his things. You know, he picked on the people that couldn't fight back and couldn't stand up for themselves. Um, and why should anybody believe that I was telling the truth? You know, it's not, it wasn't unheard of that a model might be involved in drugs or something. But I think to take 
somebody taking having uh, having had a line of cocaine under duress really to then spin that into that I was mob connected drug smuggler drug dealer uh, the other girls that were involved in that story were accused of being madams and prostitutes and, and it was just it was horrific I lost I lost an awful lot not just my potential earnings or my job at the time but I was evicted from the flat where I was living um, I remember I didn't I went back home to my parents in Manchester I didn't leave my bedroom for nearly four months I was very very I went from being a really happy girl with everything you know on this great path to to success I do believe um, into walking into a job centers and, and being on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medicines and my mum even had a heart attack six days after that article broke. I mean, who's to say why that was, but a little part of me always wonders, could it have been from that? So I think, you know, the reverberations from these stories, it isn't just about hurting that person. That the, It just has a massive, massive spread. Um, it was years and years before anyone would touch me with a barge pole. I was um, starting to get into TV at the time when the story broke and it was it seemed quite promising I was doing okay and that just went it came to a massive halt. Um, I've done quite a bit of acting in my later years. I've won awards, I've been nominated for, for, for many, many awards. It turns out I did actually have a bit of talent, even though I was a model. I mean, now it's unheard of. So who knows, you know, what, what kind of career I, I could have had. and. I do lose sleep thinking, you know, what could have been, what could have happened. He took me down at the very, very beginning of my career. Yeah, he enjoyed all of the praise and he was winning awards left, right and centre. He got tumbled at the very end of his and I just think he's got a lot to ask, to answer for. Do you know, I think prior to, to me being a victim of one of these stories, I, I think I used to believe what I read in the papers because you just presume that they can't, they wouldn't be able to print lies, like that, that there would be some kind of fact-finding thing or some box that they couldn't tick. Um, and that, you know, there's no smoke without fire, there's got to be truth. You can't possibly print lies in a newspaper. But the fact is, you can, and he did, over and over and over again. Um, I honestly don't believe a word I can't read in the papers anymore. Um, and I think a lot of people are now beginning I think particularly with him going to prison for perjury, I think he got 15 months, um, that proved that, that he was lying. And it took somebody of quite high profile like Talisa to sort of tip it out of the bag. And obviously the people that were working with, alongside of him sort of admitting their part in it to bring him to justice. Otherwise, if it wasn't for that, he may be still be out there doing it now. And I'm sure there are more Muslim Mahmoods out there. Um, who knows?